Hey, everybody! Welcome back, all my Earthlings. So glad you guys are here for another episode of AWS Power Hour Machine Learning. I'm Kirsten Dupart, Lead ML Technical Curriculum Developer with AWS Training and Certification. And this is my friend, John. <laughs> He's a senior cloud technologist. John, where? What? <laughs> where are you? Hey, uh, I'm I'm at the my sugar shack right now, so just making some maple syrup. That, uh, what? that that's what's going on there. So uh, sugar yeah. Sugar shack. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> so, welcome back, oh everyone. Gosh. Welcome back, chat. Nice to see you again. What's going on, chat? Um, for those of you joining us for the first time, John has a maple syrup um, making <laughs> setup in his in his house. Um, but really, uh, this is this is AWS Power Hour. Um, it's all, we are here to teach you all about how to leverage AI services that are at the top of our AWS ML stack. And I seriously cannot believe that this is our fifth episode, you guys, of the whole season. Um, over the last couple of weeks, we have looked at extracting data from scanned documents using Amazon Textract. We've analyzed unstructured data with Amazon Comprehend, and we've complemented our code um, reviews with Amazon Code Guru. Mm -hmm. um, and today. We're going to look at Amazon Kendra and how to use the service to build, of course, intelligent machine learning backed searches. Super excited for this episode, Kirsten. So search is Thanks. something that I interact with every five minutes, pretty much. <laughs> I, yep. I know nothing, right? So, um, so I'm sure everyone else is kind of doing the same as me on a regular basis, maybe a little bit less than me. So even if you're not particularly technical, I think you're going to enjoy learning how Kendra uses natural language questions instead of simple keywords to get the answers you're looking for in a search. Yeah, definitely. Um, I totally agree, John. This is an episode for literally everybody. Um, but before we get into all of that chat, of course, how are you guys doing out there? Um, would love to see where everyone's connecting in from today. So if you want to just throw in where you're sitting, that would be great. Um, per usual, I am here in Seattle. Um, John, where are you joining us from again? Your sugar shack? What exactly sugar is shack. that? Sugar <laughs> shack. So this one is in Saint Rosalie. So it's in Quebec somewhere. So just just somewhere in there. Um, okay. Next to a bunch wow. of trees, but yeah, yeah, I'm streaming right from there. Like you can you can see me interacting with it right there. You want to see it again? <laughs> like, look, yeah. see, it's it's oh, me there right there. Is. See, yeah. real no, real interacting with it. <laughs> anybody in Sydney or Toronto? Ooh, Melbourne, Minneapolis, Florida, Virginia, awesome. Ohio, New York. Anybody out there have a um, sugar shack that they're <laughs> calling in from today? <laughs> I wish I had a sugar shack. Oh, sweet factory. Those were the that, days. That's awesome. So um, what we have here, so we have a pretty packed agenda so for today, so as normal, right? So what's, um, what's on that agenda here so I can kind of try to draw it on my whiteboard as, as usual? Let's go there. Yeah, yep. Um, so in just a second, we're going to do a quick review of our last episode on Amazon Code Guru, um, and then we're going to get right into Kendra. So um, we have a really awesome guest today, you guys, Ben Snively. He's a principal solutions architect who specializes in data science. Um, super awesome, interesting guy. He's going to help us do all of that, getting into Kendra. Um, he's got a console level demo of Kendra so that we can see how it works, um, as well as some of its key features. And then we might even play a fun alien game. Um, so okay, definitely I stick around for that. Alien. Oh, <laughs> yep. Um, and then Ben is going to walk us through um, a real life solution that I just think is totally bonkers, extremely awesome. Um, he and others at AWS helped build something called Core 19 Search, which is an intelligent search built uh, using Kendra and some other AI services. But um, it's used to help scientists search tens of thousands of research papers and documents so that they can get answers to their questions around COVID-19. Um, and so this is super relevant. I'm very excited. Um, and then, of course, as always, John, we're going to wrap up with just a few questions. And then we will send um, everybody away with some hands-on opportunities if you are into that kind of thing. Uh, I think that's about it. Does that sound good to you, John? Yep. Sounds good to me. Speaking of hands-on work, Kirsten, let's do a recap of last week's episode by following up on one of the action items that we threw out there. So, chat, at the end of our episode on CodeGuru, we challenge you to get hands-on practice with CodeGuru Reviewer by grabbing some of your code and then running it through it. So we're curious to know if you actually did your homework. So let me switch over into our, our polling software here somewhere on one of my quiz. 
Um, and then we're going to see, so if, uh, if uh, actually, oops, sorry, one second, missing a screen. There it is. So, and, and see if you actually did your homework at all. Um, so just type, go for it. <laughs> it uh, well, I was just laughing because I was thinking, it, don't worry, it's anonymous, so we're not going to tell your parents if you didn't do your homework. Um, but for anyone who's <laughs> new to this, go ahead and throw a one, two, or three in the chat, depending on what your answer is. Twos, threes, some ones. Wait. We had someone with a good good excuse. It's not his dog that ate the homework. So um, William is saying, in my defense, I have been preparing for a job interview. OK, fine. We're going to give that to you. OK, fine. That's, <laughs> we'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> this so, is great. Well, if, if there, with seeing all these twos and threes, I love that we've got people who are here now that um, weren't here last week. So welcome, everyone. Very cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, First uh, episode. Yay. It, yeah. And it seems like for the people that watched the episode, there was like 4.5 off of like of the 50%, right? So we're at 9% versus the yeah, that that's pretty that that's not that that much. Your your dog really ate your uh, your homework. <laughs> so um, just by the way, last week I said that I was going to bring a demo this week to connect the topics that we've talked about in our previous four episodes. The first one was on machine learning in general. The second was on ext extracting text from pictures using TextTrack. The third was on natural language processing using Comprehend. And then last week, we learned about CodeGuru, a service that you can use to inspect your code. So I wanted to show you a demo with all of this together. But judging by the fact that you guys didn't do your homework, I don't feel bad at all about me not doing my homework <laughs> here. <laughs> so um, that's how that works. It, it, Kirsten, uh, like, what's that noise? Do you hear the knocking right now? I do. What? Where? Who's knocking? Whoa, wait, wait, one, one sec. So, um, Haywood. What well, man? What were you hey! doing here? What the <laughs> heck are you doing here? Haywood Osmond, senior technical trainer with training and certification. What are you doing here? <laughs> hey, John. Hey, Kirsten. I'm here because I've been following the show. I've been answering chat questions. I like the episodes. I wanted to say hi. Yay! Oh my gosh, we're so glad to hear. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that's same awesome. Here. You By actually the way, did the homework, right? Yeah, but... I actually did the Code Guru homework. I love learning <laughs> about this stuff. Uh, so I wrote some Java code. It uses Textract and Comprehend to process documents. Can I take a minute to show you what I did and uh, get your feedback? Yes, Absolutely, please. we can do that. Yeah, let's yep. do it. Cool. Someone did their homework. Love it. I, I know. The old teacher in me is so proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so people were asking really good questions during the Comprehend episode, and I thought, let's try to build the thing that people were asking about. So let's say that you take a document, right? Uh, we need this place to store it. So I'm going to put that document in Amazon S3. And whenever a new document, like maybe somebody dropped in a resume, for example, gets uh, put into S3, it can trigger a little bit of code that I wrote in AWS Lambda. And I wrote this code in Java so that we can have Code Guru help us out and uh, and see how good or bad my code is. And okay. when the code runs, it's going to use TextTract. The TextTract is going to detect the lines of text in the document. And once I know what the text is in there, I'm going to send that over to Comprehend. I just want to point out to make sure I'm not the only one with bad handwriting. Just just making sure everyone is like gets that. Like, hey, yeah. this is almost as bad as me. Almost. For sure. <laughs> and so now once I have the data back from Comprehend with like the entities that we detect, um, I need a place to store it. So I'm just going to put that in Amazon DynamoDB. So that's our NoSQL data store. So it makes it a little bit easier to kind of try to do that. Yeah. Um, I like that it had a console demo, so I didn't have to make a UI. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the way to do it, for sure. All right, cool. So let's let's give it a try before we jump into the code. Yeah. So basically, you're going to first put the data in S3. It will yep. magically do everything. And then we're going to look at DynamoDB to see if the data actually shows up there. Awesome. Yep. I'm going to upload. A document. OK. Cool. I'm going to hit Upload here. It says and Alien Resume out... there. Yeah, you want to see what it is? <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
You got, you got my buddy here, the Martian. And, oh my um, gosh, yes. You know? <laughs> What's that? So, destroyer of the Thunder Child using Martian. This is awesome. UFO <laughs> pilot. I... Oh my gosh, <laughs> leadership, team leader. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, well, that's yes. the best thing I've seen all day. Thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, for awesome. sure, right? I mean, we were talking about, like, resumes and aliens during the Comprehend episode, so I was like, let's try it out, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's go over sure. to DynamoDB and see if my code did what it was supposed to do. Uh, so I'm going to go in and check my tables, and I have a table here, and if we take a look at the items... Oh, awesome, check it out. We got something now for alien resume. And mm -hmm. So from... Text tract, I was able to get the different lines of text. So it's pulling out these different snippets of text. Yeah. Um, I can see pilot. UFO pilot right there, right? Yeah. To the I cloud. like that. And then from uh, Comprehend, I was able to get the entity. So let's take a look at this one. So basically, just... that, that text column is text tract. And then yeah. that entity column on the right is, is, uh, is Comprehend, what that okay. replied back. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, you learn a lot about services just by playing with them. Um, and um, it looks like I'm getting lines of text. There is geometry information you can read from TextRact. I'm not doing it yet, but maybe in a future version, I will um, I'll put more contiguous stuff back together. But awesome. so far, that's not bad, right? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's really good. I uh, have a question, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about your alien friend and their resume, um, but it's it's in English. Is there a reason that we're assuming that aliens speak English? I mean, that'd be preferable for for me. But <laughs> is there is there a reason? That's that's real interesting. You know, um, I wrote this resume for my alien friend, and English <laughs> is my best language. But we should keep that in mind when we look at the code for sure, because. I should make sure not to exclude our, our Martian friends and assume that they only speak English. Okay. That's yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so is that, so we, we saw S3. Um, if you open up that, that uh, architecture diagram, I think I can do that. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, so we sent the data in S3, then it does some magic stuff. Um, so let me put on my cursor again. So we, we sent the data inside of S3, and then some magic stuff happened in Lambda, and then all of that got sent into Dynamo. I'm interested in seeing what is happening in Lambda. Can you can you show us that code? Yeah, for sure. So can I, we're I, going... I heard that you were doing that in uh, Java, though. It, was there a specific reason? Because we, we all know over the last few weeks that Node.js is the best programming language. Like, we've all agreed to that. So uh, um... I, I don't know what I agreed to, but you told me CodeGuru understands Java. And it's been a long time since I've written code professionally. I figured having um, a machine learning service to tell me when I'm doing it wrong would be helpful. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I see a question in the chat right now that's pretty good. Uh, where uh, So from Ma... Sorry, I'm terrible. Meta, by, meta B side. Guys, a question. If the resume is in a docx or PDF converted to UTF-8 format, do we need text tract? Uh, yeah, so text tract understands text. All right, comprehend understands text. <laughs> text tract takes images or PDF and gets the text out of it and also can do some uh, analysis, like you know, keeping uh, forms together, uh, tables together. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, if you already have text, you don't necessarily need uh, text tract, but you will need some code that understands that file format and can decode it and make API calls. Uh, awesome. In my case, I just had an image of the resume, so it was a JPEG or a PNG. Um, OK. Yep. Cool. So if we go back to this, S3 mm -hmm. invokes Lambda, right? So it yes. needs to call like a function of some sort. So I it, that looks like that handle request that is at your, your top there. Um, so yep. absolutely. What, what else What else do we need to do if I, if if I bring back your architecture diagram right here in mm -hmm. the bottom right, um, we see that it goes to S3, then it's supposed to go to text track first. Yep. So I have a method I wrote called extract text that okay. will go and make API calls to text track. And then for comprehend? Right there, I have another one called get entities. OK. And so uh, and yeah, then... we can take a look. 
DynamoDB seems to be your last thing right there, right? Mm -hmm. So OK, so we have everything there. Let's take a look at your extract text and see how complex it is to do that in Java. <laughs> yeah, got to love Java. It's very, very um, clear because you know we, we say exactly what you're doing at every step along the way. But here is the API call that we make to extract. So I have a extract client, and I say I'm using the synchronous method, detect text. So this will take my image and return back to me pretty much immediately the text that it found on that page. Awesome. And then, OK, so that's perfect. So that was the first step. And then the next yeah. step after that is to go to um, comprehend, right? Yeah. So here, we got my get entities method. Hey, and... we've got a question real quick in the chat, too. Um, William's asking if we can possibly zoom in a little bit. He's on a smaller screen than usual. I can try. That's possible. Hopefully, that helps. I'm trying to get the whole function to fit on the screen at once. But uh, is that better? That looks that better. better? I, I'm going to try to re-add the architecture diagram so it makes sense. But right now, we're looking at your get entities, right? So that's yep. the comprehend stuff. OK, good. Good. Yeah, uh, William is saying it's understandable now. So that's good. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Thank you, thank you friends. Awesome. Cool. So yeah, I got a whole bunch of lines of text, and I'm making a batch API call to comprehend so that I can pack multiple requests into a single web request to the backend service, uh, be a little bit uh, faster and more efficient over the network that way. That's cool. So you have text track, comprehend, a little bit of machine learning around here. Where's your code guru stuff? That I, I yeah. asked for code guru in the homework. Yeah, so we're, we're going to check out CodeGuru now. Do you, do you see anything wrong with this code? I think Kirsten already told me that I shouldn't assume our alien friends speak English. That's true. OK, so you're kind of trying to do the same thing as last week and pitting me against CodeGuru. Is that, is that the point right there? Yeah, for sure. I'm supposed to try to find an issue on this thing again? OK, so again, chat, I'm going to need your help again. Um, but. So basically, what this function seems to be doing is OK, so we build a builder, or sorry, we build a client at the top, so comprehend. Every time my Lambda function gets run, we build a client. Then a little bit of a for loop against the data, create the batch entities, send that into comprehend, and then we return the results. It works. Anyone has any idea what uh, what the problem could be? What it could detect in Code Guru? Because I really don't want to fail this time. <laughs> really... Yeah, for sure. The English thing we can we can use an API call to detect the dominant language. So I'm gonna take that as more homework for me to follow up on. Fair enough. Can't New we batch detect said... inside for the loop. Oh. Well, so the the. Comment so new batch detect inside a for loop. So maybe, yeah, maybe that could be one thing there. And then there is another one right after on can't we allocate said comprehend client for each lambda executing in context? <laughs> I'm going with mm. that. That's pretty smart. That does so like, sound smart. That's basically the fact that every time that you run your lambda function, it will create the, 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 the client, but then we could have that as a global variable, so it only creates it once, and then that will enhance the performance. I'm going to go with that. So yeah, but, thank you. OK, let's, let's, let's check uh, CodeGuru and see, <laughs> see what, it, what it thinks. So CodeGuru can work with your Git repositories. I created a pull request that um, has just the changes for that function. And now we can you know, do the code review. And I can take a look at some of these changes in my code. So we got okay. my app.java here. And check it out. You guys are good. You found the same thing CodeGuru told me about, which is uh, twofold. Uh, over here, CodeGuru is saying, yeah, like why are you making a client every time your Lambda runs? You should cache that to speed things up. Good. Uh, and then it found something that I didn't even think about. It said, you know, if you know what region your Lambda is going to run in, you can make things even faster if you tell Lambda what region to make the client in instead of relying on it to do a lookup. So I thought that was kind of cool that it's already giving me advice for how I can make my Lambda function better. And it already knows that this is a Lambda function. That was really That's helpful. That's really smart. I actually never thought of doing that. Like, why? 
I just execute, just pick it up from whatever my config file is, or I'm running in Lambda, just pick it up from this. But then, yeah, I can save some processing by doing that. OK, yeah, that, that's way smarter than me. But definitely, oh. um, we, with that, that answer uh, from earlier, I thank you. So I, I need to go back. So Tdor, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you for this. Um, so basically, we're looking. So that was CodeGuru Reviewer, and it's just throwing um, comments back via that pull request in Git. So that mm -hmm. that was that homework there. Was that there was anything in there? Cool. Uh, did Code Guru say anything about the fact that um, your code was written in Java? Hey, would got some yeah. people in the chat saying that was a <laughs> that was a problem. Yeah, I, I, as I understand it, Code Guru understands JVM languages right now, so. I guess I could upgrade to something like Kotlin or Scala. But my first job as a software developer where I was getting paid was to write Java code. I haven't learned the new JVM languages yet. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's... Either way, hey, Wood, that was that was awesome. Um, thank you for doing your homework and for sharing and with, with all of us and for stopping by. Very, very, very cool to have you on here. Yeah, thanks, Would Stop Thank by any time. And uh, yes. next time, just don't worry about knocking, right? So just, just come on okay. in, barge in right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was fun. Um, we have to do it again sometime, friends. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Cool. See you, Haywood. Bye, Haywood. OK, well, that was a fun surprise. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, we let's keep this thing rolling, right, with the fun in here. And then we're going to get Ben onto the show um, right now so that we can start diving into Amazon Kendra. So let's do Perfect. that. Hey, Ben. Ben Smiley, welcome. Welcome to the show. Hey. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, ben, quick question. Uh, just wondering, who's your favorite Star Wars character? Oh, gosh. Um... Like everyone loves Obi Wan, uh, but you know I'm gonna have to go with R two D two because of the machine learning aspect and the fact that you know it has so much intelligence inside of it. So I'm gonna go with R two D two. Had to ask. So <laughs> we're we're having a serious discussion here. Like, what is that Star Wars stuff that we're talking about? So so let, let go. Let's go back. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ben, I know you've been following our shows, um, and as you know, this is the part where we love to ask you uh, or our guests what is their ML journey. So, how did you get into ML, Ben? Um, always been in kind of data systems, data science, uh, that sort of thing. So, after finishing uh, my school, uh, built data systems, and um, back then it was a whole bunch of parentheses with uh, Lisp. Now it's a whole bunch of tabs with Python. Um, Unfortunately, it's not Node.js. I know that's some of the, the folks' favorite on the, on the show. Uh, but yeah, uh, have always been doing it and love it ever since. Can I, can I ask you, Ben, um, what, what, why have you always been so curious about data? Uh, it, I, I guess it's really like um, dri driving the insights, being able to really justify your answers. Like I, I've always wanted to, like even growing up, I've always wanted to know the why, the why, the why. Um, I'm sure I, I really... Um, annoyed my mom growing up. Hopefully she's not watching. So, <laughs> shout out to all the moms. Okay, yeah, exactly. awesome, very cool. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, as, as we said at the top of the hour, right? We we are super excited to learn more about Kendra and then what that service has to offer. So, are you ready to jump into it? Absolutely, let's go. Okay, awesome. let me share your screen. There it is. Sounds good. Yeah, so Kendra, uh, it's a, a new managed service that, that, that we launched. Essentially, it's an enterprise search service. It's powered by machine learning. Uh, and really what that means is when you're asking questions, let's say I'm asking uh, you know, a where question or a what question or a why question or a, a who question, um, it semantically understands um, that you know, when you're asking when, it should return a date. If you're asking who it should return a person. So it really understands both uh, what questions are being asked as well as being able to uh, understand the documents being ingested. So, you know, we're really seeing uh, lots of use cases. So you're seeing, you know, Q&A bots, uh, people using Connect uh, with our call-in centers, uh, internal search tools, uh, a lot of different use cases that are really adding this machine learning on top of their searches. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, are there some key components that are within Kendra to enable um, all of this question answering um, back and yeah. forth? 
Yeah, absolutely. Let's step through some of them. So uh, really with, with Kendra, uh, what you have is you have these different indexes. Uh, an index is really a, a, a location uh, where you could add and ingest your documents. Um, and documents could be PDF, PowerPoints, uh, uh, plain text. If you have things like PNG, you really want to use text track and those other services, uh, but it really lets you um, ingest these these documents. Uh, could be a text document or uh, other types of formats. Um, when you have that ingested, um, it, it really uses these data sources. Um, so the first component is really these data sources. These data sources allow you to really connect to different silos of data. So you could have it all consolidated in your data lake in S3, but let's say you have data in, in Salesforce or SharePoint, uh, one of those sources. Uh, what you could do is you could connect into those and bring your data in, into Kendra. You know, awesome. Yeah. Um, there's also FAQs. Uh, so really under data sources, these could be any types of, of documents. FAQs really allow you to define curated questions. So, you know, for okay. example, you know, uh, for for example, we're going to uh, show some well architected. Uh, hopefully, folks on on uh, on the chat are, are familiar with well architected. Would love to 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 hear folks have questions about well architected. But um, you know, really, what we have is we have these FAQs that are these curated lists, uh, which lets you uh, go in and say, okay, these are known answers uh, to common questions. But really, a lot of the power comes in in that unstructured document and being able to use comprehension. Uh, to be able to drive those questions. And, and we'll give some demos here in a second of, the, of that, so. Awesome, so, so you have the data source to throw the data inside of your index, and then those FAQs is another way that you can throw data inside of your index. Exactly, yeah, those are two awesome. separate data types. Exactly right. Uh, cool. The other element is defining document attributes. Uh, so within document attributes, you could have uh, things like titles and uh, authors and other types of attributes for each of these documents. Uh, that could help with filtering. So let's say you want to search for um, all the different ML algorithms, uh, but only the programming language of Node.js. You could do that filtering of the programming language uh, to be able to do some of that. So, so, um, so you have facets, you make it searchable, it could be returnable, that sort of thing. So, and then those facets, do they get automatically populated depending on your data source or is it automatic That's for everything? You have to do. Like... Yeah. It, it's, something, it's something you do today. Uh, so um, I'm actually going to show a couple coding examples here in, in a moment. So, you know, what we could do, let, let's go ahead and create a new index. So I'm going to go ahead in here and create this index. I'm going to call it uh, Twitch index two. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create this. Uh, everything's within a role. And what we're going to do is uh, let's go ahead. And, uh, there's two types of, of indexes, uh, development and enterprise. Uh, development allows you to really test out the service. Check out the free tier. There's actually a free tier for Kendra as well if you're, if you're trying it out. And then enterprise is really for if you're building a, a, a full enterprise system. Uh, you want it HA highly available across your different AZs. So, and what we're going to oh, do is. Yep. Uh, we're we're actually going to create this um, and use it uh, in a bit to uh, uh, to create some data sources to ingest some documents uh, that sort of thing. So very cool. cool. Um, AZs, by the way, is availability zones for anybody who might not know. By the way, Steve O Bandito says he loves the well architected framework. Ben, um, nice. I do have a question though. Now that you've created that index, um, how do you get the unstructured document or the FAQ actually into it? Absolutely. So um, the way you actually get them into uh, into it is through these data sources. Um, we're going to be creating those uh, in a moment uh, okay. to be able okay. to uh, to be able to create those. Um, so um, so you know through there we, we could add these different data sources. So let let's go ahead and um, show a little bit on. Um, what some of those queries look like, uh, and then we'll show um, how to get some of the data into uh, into that. So. You know, cool. here we have these data sources. The, you know, here is a, a well architect. You know, for for those well architected fans, here's actually one of the data <laughs> sources for S3. Um, you know, here under the settings, what you can see is, uh, you know, we're pulling it from the S3 data source, uh, and these are the include patterns. So you could add the different include patterns there. And in order to actually do that, uh, let's let's actually do a couple of queries. So you know, we could say, what uh, is the well architected framework 
I'd love a machine learning service to, you know, be able to fix my misspellings. Luckily, I spelled that all correctly. Um, <laughs> here, what you can see is a couple things um, worth pointing out. This top answer is being driven from this unstructured PDF. Uh, so what happened is through that data source that we set up in that index, um, yep. it read all the documents. Uh, answer and is now uh, telling us what the well-architected framework is. The FAQs actually show up down here uh, to be able to, uh, you know, see what the different FAQs are uh, to be able to, um, you know, really do that. You know, let, let's do one more query. Uh, I'm going to say how to deploy uh, machine learning uh, models to IoT. Great question. And then, and then here, what we see, you know, you could use SageMaker uh, to build, train, and deploy machine learning models, um, and then use things like Greengrass to be able to do inferencing on the edge. So. What this is doing is it's processing those documents. So basically, you use um, S3 or your FAQs or all of those connectors to throw data inside of an index. And then um, Kendra will automatically go and, and understand all of these documents, parse everything that is in there, build that entire index. And then when you type your questions, it's, it's using machine learning to kind of try to figure out where in, it has found each one of these things. Is that how it's doing it? Yeah, is, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, so it, it's using machine learning to find in the documents. And then if there's a FAQ, uh, you, you get those back as well. So um, when you're building your system, you could say, um, you know, maybe I want to take a priority for the FAQs or the comprehension answers, uh, those sorts of things. So each of these returned data sets are actually flagged in the, like if you're interacting this through this programmatically, they're all different data types returned to you through the API calls. OK. And then we got a question about uh, from Mata Beside, and what is Kendra searching against? A lot of document in AWS. Like, where is it storing these things? I guess is the question. Yeah. So that this is all you maintain the ownership of your data. This is all kind of uh, in your account when you're setting up the index. So what happens is when you create your index, um, you could have it scan over your documents um, and have it crawl your own artifacts, uh, that sort of thing. So this is all um, you know, in your own isolated spaces uh, to be able to index really. Um, it could be medical uh, information like we're going to demo uh, later on, or it could be legal information or IT resources. Um, it could really, um, there's different trained domain sets, uh, but it could really be any data set that you want to bring into the service. Awesome. That's great. So using the console looks easy enough right there, right? But uh, I'm sure everyone wants to see how this can be integrated in their application. Because like th this is in AWS console, how I search. So is, is, there an, is there an API that you can call to kind of simulate this, but have that search in your app? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, let's go ahead and sh switch over. Uh, I know, I know, this is Python, um, uh, <laughs> but let's go over, switch over some Python code. Um, what this is doing in, in this code is one thing worth calling out uh, in your code. Um, you specify essentially an index ID, uh, and okay. the way this is correlated is that's the index ID when you create the index, um, and you're going to see as we're pointing to the new index that we just created uh, a moment ago. We could change that value uh, in just new documents, uh, that sort of thing. So programmatically, it's really um, quite simple to interact with. Um, you know, you have uh, you know the Kendra uh, client here, just like in the Java example you saw earlier. You know, when you create your client, you can create a, a Kendra client, and then there's this query API. And then when I do this query API for you know what is well architected, um, it's returning back really all the results. But in the display here, I'm really just showing uh, the first result and highlighting um, the HTML here. So, you know, well, architect architecture framework is a scalable mechanism. Um, so you could really start awesome. stepping through all that, um, get all types of different results there. So basically, it was just that little call, right? It's just that, that client.get query, pass in the index, and then you send your question. I can put that in any kind of application, like since the JavaScript. SDK works. Uh, I could do that in my own web browser and 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 use that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, as exactly. There there's some additional flags you could add on. They're optional, but it's really okay. as simple as creating the client, uh, passing in the required uh, fields. Really, the only two required fields are that index ID and the text. The rest of the fields are optional. 
And you know, as you can see here, when we run this, what are the pillars now of well architected? Uh, we see this is extracted from the documents that we ingested, and the pillars are you know these five pillars. Uh, so it's all uh, very very easy to interact with. Awesome. And then we have a question right there, and then I can see that you're going into this. So Jiro. Jerso Beck is asking for what advents filters are there. And then I can kind of see you have a little bit more there. That, that's pretty cool. Right on yeah, the spot I, there. <laughs> I, um, I, wish, I wish I would have paid you to say that. Uh, but since you said it already, I, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. Um, so here, <laughs> here what you can see is you know, some of the filters are things like, um, remember, there's two data sources, or there's two types of data inside Kendra. There's documents, uh, which could be document returns or comprehension returns. And then there's FAQs or Q&As. Uh, so here, what we could do is we could say, maybe in my use case or for this particular query, I only care about the comprehension uh, uh, answers or maybe the, only the FAQs. So now when I you know, query this one, uh, what we could see is we could actually see, and this, I want to show a little bit more of the JSON responses here. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is showing a little bit more of, of the results. So previously, what I showed is I actually just pulled elements out of this to highlight the text. Uh, here, what you can see is you really get all the information that the UI uses uh, to be able to ingest it into your 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 Python or Java uh, code uh, under the cover. So, wow. um, you know. I can show a little bit more on the, the queries themselves. Um, so we, we could, um, uh, the, the query itself is if you, um, if you, you actually uh, kind of look Zoomed out a little. Yes, absolutely. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. So um, really, uh, so this is an example uh, of Python and Java. Uh, so if you actually uh, look, want to look at the, all the different inputs uh, for, uh, for Python, for example, uh, if you bring up any of our APIs, uh, what you could do is you could actually go in here, and if you want to see all the optional fields, uh, and I'll make this bigger. Uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, so what we can see here is these are all optional fields. So what you could do is you could do like the faceted navigation. You could do filters. You could do a lot of things that you'd want to uh, that you do normally with search tools. Even though this is ML powered, it still lets you do all the faceted navigation and, and kind of all that jazz. Um, you can do like contains all keys, contains any keys. So there's really um, quite a bit of options a for lot. your advanced use cases. Yeah. So awesome. uh, the nice thing is, if you have a simple problem, you could just fill in those two lines. If you need to do something advanced, the options are there for you uh, if you want to override them. So that so. index at the beginning that you created, um, can you show an example of actually populating that index with some documents and FAQs maybe? Yeah, yeah. like that yeah. Twitch 2 or thing that you created. I think that's the one, right? <laughs> Twitch index yeah, 2. Abs <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. So the this this Twitch index too, um, it it's still creating, so it, it might take another minute or so here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a little bit of the process here, uh, and then we can okay. uh, jump over to that as soon as it's done. Um, usually it takes um, about ten minutes uh, to create. Uh, so, okay. but let me let me show what that experience is here. Uh, so within here, uh, you have all these connectors, and remember. Remember, there's those document attributes, right? Uh, so you could have the document attribute of uh, all these different programming languages or authors or really any type of facet that you'd like. Um, and the thing is, like, it, for example, if you're connected into SharePoint, what you could do is you could actually create those document attributes and map them to the different attributes in SharePoint. Um, it doesn't have to just be within S3. So across these different data sources, you can still map to those different document attributes uh, or document categories under the covers. And awesome. Ben, there was so, a question um, in the chat that T. Kelly got to um, with a link to supported data sources. But the question is, can you have a data source based on ES? Uh, based on Elasticsearch? Um, you, usually, um, usually what you'll have is um, there's not a native Elasticsearch ingestion here. Uh, usually what will happen is if you have Elasticsearch, um, folks will point it to the S3 that's being loaded from uh, you know, Elasticsearch. So if you're using Amazon Elasticsearch with Firehose or one of those uh, techniques, um, usually it'll be pointing um, to like that ingestion point. Um, there's okay. not a native uh, Elasticsearch. In um, that being said, um, I'm going to show a couple of coding examples. You could actually code it yourself. You could do a Elasticsearch query and then use uh, our APIs to actually put the documents into Kendra if you'd like. Uh, but generally, folks awesome. will point to the, yeah. Awesome. Very cool. So, uh, 
so whoever asked that question, I want to thank because that uh, now this other index is all created. So I'm going to actually go into the new index <laughs> that we just uh, that we just set up. Um, here we're going to create a new data source. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, add the connector. Uh, and again, you know, I'm actually have the option to create different types of connectors. I'm going to uh, call this my machine learning connector because these are machine learning documents that we're going to be ingesting. Awesome. Then we hit next. And then here we could uh, specify a S3 bucket. So, you know, to the question that was earlier, you know, how, how do we ingest the documents? If you have, if you have your different documents here, these could be your PDFs, uh, your PowerPoints, your Word documents, your HTML files. Um, if you have them in your S3 location, you could point to them this way. Okay. And then we specify a metadata folder. Uh, uh, we'll talk about this metadata folder in a moment. Uh, and this will let us go in and create this data source. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, say run on demand. Nice thing about these connectors is it maintains um, knowing how to update the data. So if you have this run once a day, it will know all the new documents that show up in your S3 location and only index those. If you do it programmatically, like we were talking about earlier with like Elasticsearch, you have to kind of maintain that state of what's in the, the cluster yourself. Um, so there's kind of some trade-offs uh, there, not to get too far into the weeds there, but. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this. And let's, uh, let me take this uh, data source ID so if um, you're looking at that, right? So in, in the previous episodes, we, we saw how you can use services like TextTrack and Comprehend together. Mm. Is there a way to integrate those services with Kendra? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, let, let's take a, a fun uh, CIA alien example. Uh, so here what we have I'm sorry, is... did you say a CIA example? Uh, yeah, so this is... Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, th this is, uh, it's not really, um, it's been declassified as open in the, in the, in the world before uh, I have uh, people like knock down my door. Uh, but this is an article. <laughs> 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 uh, so that is awesome. So that's image, right? So yep. since it's an so, image, I'm, I'm guessing you're, we're going to need uh, one of those, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, since it's an image, right, if this was a PNG or in this case, it's a JPEG, uh, what we're going to do is, um, you know, read that in. Uh, I, I happen to be reading it through a byte stream here. And what we could do is we could um, go ahead and start chaining the, some of these things together. So here we're running text uh, to be able to get uh, all the text out of that. Um, and what we can see here is uh, all the text being pulled out of this uh, record, but kind of the really slick thing to do here is start chaining some of these two together. So um, here we're actually running comprehend to detect phrases. Uh, we could also run comprehend to detect entities. And remember, uh, documents could have attributes. So what you could do is you could use these other services together to generate attributes for your documents and then do your faceted navigation uh, to be able to filter your different data sets based on entities that were derived from your unstructured data. So you're really generating more metadata uh, as you're running uh, to be able to um, enrich the search experience. Wow. And then uh, kind of awesome. the cool thing here is, you know, we could go ahead and, and run this. Uh, it's ingesting that, uh, you know, I mentioned, you know, showing the programmatic way. Again, only a few lines of code here uh, to be able to programmatically put documents into, into the index, uh, kind of relating back to that Elasticsearch question. Here I could have, queried Elasticsearch and done this, uh, I happen to be pulling it all through this flow. So um, so here we, we uh, really kind of um, very, very quickly did like an end-to-end -end flow, calling TextTrack, being able to run Comprehend, uh, you know, really kind of going through all, all those different steps there. Wow. We've got some good, <laughs> yes, I have been waiting for this moment all night, my whole life, probably, actually. <laughs> um, but, um, John, I have a question for you. Actually, this is this is a little bit off the top of my head here. But um, chat, if you know the answer, or feel free to, to throw it in the chat. Um, but, John, what is salted butter? Well, wait, so are you trying to pin me again against one of our other services? Is that <laughs> is that what the idea I is? I don't know. Again? I just had this question. I, I, okay. I'm going somewhere with this. Don't worry, guys. I'm uh, Bear with me. So, so I, I might or may not be doing that, John. <laughs> well, it, it's the butter that I put in my popcorn, obviously. Like, that. that's what salted butter is. Like, uh, mm -hmm. anyone just mm -hmm. throw some... some I, emoticon of popcorn there. I don't, I don't have my popcorn with me. So th thank you. Thank you. Yep. 
That, yep. I put salted butter in, in my popcorn. That's where it goes. So, Ben, <laughs> I'm wondering, just watching you go through and, and showing what, um, what Kendra can pull out of a document like this, I'm wondering if Kendra has a better answer <laughs> than John's yeah. answer. So let, let's go ahead and say, you know, what is salted butter here? And what we're going to do is we're going to ask Kendra what salted butter is. Uh, and um, if the light turns on, Kendra actually knows the answer. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, so salted butter I is I like that, a, a little light that pops behind you. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. um, it's using our AI services to be able to talk to a, to a smart light uh, whenever you're answering the questions. And here what you see is uh, it, it, salted butter, when it's fully made for you, is an AI service that's easily integrated into your application. So that you is... basically use Kendra for all of our previous episodes. That that's awesome. Yeah, that that should have been my answer. Butter is for <laughs> AI services at the top of that stack. So uh, that that's awesome. Um, I I have one for you though, Kirsten. So let, let, let's do that one. Um, okay. What about uh, what is Area Fifty One? Oh, you mean other than somewhere I want to go? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a super classified U.S. Air Force base that's um, out in the middle of Nevada. It's got a lot of um, intense secrecy around it due to, let's just say, some alleged um, otherworldly activity in the area. Okay. Did I win? And, well, well let, let's see what <laughs> Kendra says. Let's see if you mean. So, okay, that, that sounds pretty good. That sounds very close, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, test that was, I think so. Okay. Well, wait, that was way too easy. Like, it I love the... the aliens, but that's, it, that's fine. I, earlier, I saw when you drag it, you, you drop down, I saw a question there that said, what is Kirsten? I, I want to know what the answer to that is. <laughs> what is Kirsten? <laughs> I, I'm, like, oh, Kirsten? my God, please ask it. <laughs> Both She's an alien and <laughs> <laughs> see it. Yes, that's it. My work here is done. My life is complete. <laughs> I'm officially an alien. I'm out of here. I gotta go get my UFO. Zipper out of the galaxy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, I, I I will put your your alien sign up there. So there there you have it. That is. <laughs> Beam her up. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's cool. Okay. That, that is awesome. <laughs> so I, I think like that that was a uh, that was a lot of fun on those, but like I, I think on the serious note, there was something else, right? Um that was the uh, core 19 search that we uh, that I believe we were supposed to talk about. So yes, we're <laughs> definitely going to get there. Um, real quick, there's a question in the chat before we get to core 19 um, from Wes Amcan. What is the importance of those meta tags? So um, the the metadata tags uh, under the covers there, um, I assume it's the, these highlighting tags is uh, what's being referred to, allows you to, um, for example, when you're uh, highlighting an answer, uh, for example, um, I'll show this in, a, in the Core 19 system, but like, for example, if you ask, when did Core 19 start, the, there might be a complete sense, but the tags tell you what part of the sense answers that question. For example, it just start, started in December 2019. So it's really giving you the highlighted sections that answer those particular questions uh, of the who, the what, the when, the why, uh, uh, those sorts of things. OK, awesome. awesome. Um, thank you for that. And Ben, um, speaking of Cord 19, you were a part of a team here at AWS who built Cord 19 search, um, which, again, is that Kendra back search that uses other AWS AI services like Comprehend Medical, like Lex, um, to help scientists get answers to COVID-19 related questions. Um, pretty incredible project. And I'm super excited for you to show this off. Um, but before you do that, could you give us just a little bit of context? Um, what problem was this solution addressing and how did this whole thing get started? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, CORD19, it's using the CORD data set. Uh, it stands for the uh, COVID-19 Open Research Data Set. Um, it's really, um, you know, now it's about hundreds of thousands. It's our tens of thousands of, of papers that are published by all these different researchers. So it's very, very scientific uh, research papers that what we wanted to do is we wanted to take that data run it through a data processing pipeline and really help power researchers and scientists to help answer some of these tough questions related to COVID. Wow. That's awesome. 
let, like, can we see a demo of that? I, yeah, I would love to see that thing. Yeah, let, let's go ahead and jump into that. Um, so here we have um, you know the Core 19 search tool, and we were talking about earlier the understanding what's being asked. So you know if I say when did uh, COVID-19 start, uh, that's asking a date, right? And the mm -hmm. question about the highlighting, right? Uh, what happened here is the way it bubbled up this answer is those meta tags in the JSON that was being asked about before mm -hmm. knows that this is the top answer. And that's how in the application we know, oh, we should give the user this answer directly and then give it all the supporting documents down here to be able to answer that question. So um, so within the service, you're able to answer kind of the when. Uh, you know, for example, you could also say, uh, where did it start? Uh, now I'm asking a location. Uh, so it's going to give me a location as the highlighted text. Um, so that's really that context aware or that semantic understanding of, of the question, which is a little different than kind of traditional inverted indexes that, uh, uh, you know, optimization, all that other jazz. Okay. Um, so it's okay. searching, Kendra's you know, searching, you've, you've, you've pulled in um, documents, research papers, the scientific research papers into a data source that, that Kendra is now running through. Exactly. Yeah. So what, you know what what it's really doing architecturally um is it's uh you know taking uh taking those documents uh and being able to um you know uh first enrich them so it runs it through uh you know runs it through uh comprehend and comprehend medical uh and it does you know things like multi-label classification uh so some of what you heard about you know two two episodes ago about the custom classifier we're using those services so this is really okay. using a lot of the technology that um, you know that the episodes have been talking about um, cool. uh, to be able to do do a lot of that labeling. So we do uh, we do some pre-processing and and then uh, populate that index uh, from a uh, data lake uh, containing all these research papers. Wow. So from that data lake enrichment process using Comprehend and I guess topic modeling there, and then that's what you throw inside of Kendra, and and that's what we're kind of looking at right now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So the topic modeling really drives um, these topics over on the left hand side. So um, that way you could really slice and dice uh, your information. So we use topic modeling and then we use a multi label classifier to be able to label additional documents coming in. Um, what's kind of really fun is what you could do is you could, uh, now that we have um, this information, I know. Uh, you know, uh, the team's going to be talking about Lex uh, in a bit, but uh, just to kind of show uh, really quickly what, what I have here is I have a, a Slack uh, client uh, talking to the talking to the Kendra uh, instance. Uh, and what I could do is I could ask, you know, things like, what is MERS? Um, you know, it's a what question. Uh, so what it's going to do is it's going to give a definition of, of what MERS is. Uh, you know, I could ask, how long does uh, Corona virus live on plastic? Um, pretty complicated question. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to look at all the different papers. Uh, give me the references oh. of uh, where it was uh, 6.8 hours. Didn't really know that, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, wow. So basically what it's doing there is like it, you have your, your index that is inside of Kendra, and then we all know how we can probe that, right? We saw that portion. Um, right now you're using Slack. And then Slack is talking to Lex, which is one of our services that acts as a chatbot. So it can kind of understand what is it that you seem to be wanting to do there. And then I'm I'm guessing you're using a Lambda function there, right? And, exactly. Yep. OK, so it's Lambda function in between Lex back to that index to go grab the data exactly like we saw in your notebook earlier. Huh. That, that's exactly. pretty nice. And then we have a question around what UI hmm. technologies have you used to develop the, the UI that you had there that you showed us of, uh, of um, Core 19? Um, so what we did is within Kendra, um, you could also create a base UI. Um, so we leveraged a lot of the base uh, UI that you could do export out of the Kendra service uh, and just add our own kind of enrichment layers on top of it. Uh, so we actually. Um, we didn't have to develop the entire UI from scratch. We um, took some of those components that Kendra actually provides as a service. There's a, uh, some features to export it, uh, some nice blog posts that talks about how to do that, uh, and leverage a lot of that baseline code to be able to really speed up our development of some of the UI. That's awesome. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> so um, with, uh, with the time that we have left, do we, do we have the time to go over a quick quiz? I think so. I think we can, okay. we can, I think we're ready. 
Let, let's do that. Let me switch let's over into my quiz and pop our first quiz. So all the questions are about what you've learned about today. So let's see. Uh, let's let's see how you guys are doing. So you know the way, right? One, yep. two, three, or four in the chat for your answer, and then you can currently see the question in there. So with Amazon Kendra, you can boost search results for document from more reputable data sources. Huh. Boost search results. Did we talk about that, Ben? Um, we didn't really go into much depth there. Um, yeah. Uh, we... So it Let seems like we, we have a lot of yeses right there. Like lots of true. Uh, it, it's going high. So I'm... Uh, yeah. I don't think it's going to go to the other side. So what's the answer here? Uh, you can. Um, so uh, the data source is a, a initial facet for each document. And you could uh, boost on any of those facets. So you could actually boost uh, based on different data sources as well as any of those other custom attributes. And do so you define reputable? Um, so it's it's really let um, you outside of Kendra will define how you want to boost those. So can automatically say, um, this is the most reputable. Um, you do have a ranking uh, within the, the data documents itself. So Kendra has features to be able to find the most reputable documents per the different searches. Um, but this will be uh, defined outside. Uh, for example, if you have social media, you might uh, downgrade that versus your own enterprise documents. You might increase because they're curated from your SMEs. So got it. So a, so a human is doing that, right? Not or an alien, um, one one of those. <laughs> so. Uh, a human is doing the boosting on the categories, and then there's other uh, kind of other uh, algorithms that kind of boost based on the freshness and the the other uh, the other elements. So, wow, yeah. awesome. Okay, next question. Let's see what we have here. So, an Amazon Kendra index cannot include which type of document: HTML file, PowerPoint presentation, plain text documents, or PNG files. There's one thing across all of them one, that are two, all the fours same. And fours. Yo, sounds like four PNG files going there. So one, two, and three. What is similar between those three that is not the same with four? <laughs> not saying that's the answer. <laughs> Okay, so one thing is for sure, plain text document is not the answer. It's at 0%, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so HTML, PowerPoint, presentation, and plain text, they're all text documents, right? So the only one is PNG file. But earlier, we saw a PNG file. What, what's up with that? It, it, it was working. Oh, it was a JPEG file, but like image. How did we do the image, though? Anyone knows? How did we get that, that image from the alien thing? Oh, yeah, there we go. So um, Mata B. Syed said, we can use text track with Kendra for PNG. So that's when you combine some of those go. butter level services together. OK, <laughs> next question. That sounds like a hard one. It's a long question. We all need to have an answer. Wow, that went quick. You have your documents stored in SharePoint. When searching those documents with Amazon Kendra, you want to limit your search result by a custom category that you've defined earlier. How do you make this happen? Number two. Definitely number I, two. I'm, I'm number two. Like, I'm 100% <laughs> going with number two. That, it is definitely it. number two. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Someone is going with it for me. <laughs> I don't know the answer at all there. This is a, that's a difficult one. <laughs> I feel bad for three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, wait, three's coming back, right? We're, it's, we're doing all right there. Map documents fields to your index. So is it doing automatically? Is it, so apparently one and two seems to be around the answer. Did they both win? What's the answer there? I'm, I love that two got in. Like I'm, <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, I thought it was aliens. Uh, no, uh, you, what happens is you actually when you're defining the connector for SharePoint, uh, you could take the attributes that are in SharePoint and map them to those fields or those facets. Um, so um, it's really it's really kind of three uh, where you're able to map uh, the fields in the SharePoint 
um, uh, repository to the fields defined in your in your facets or in your index. Awesome. Wow. So that was the thing. Okay. Fair enough. That was a hard question. Okay. We're it was. <laughs> easy one now. Easy one, please. What do we have? What service did Ben need to leverage in order to make the image of the CIA UFO document searchable with Amazon Kendra? Ooh. If you didn't pay attention at all to the entire show, <laughs> if you just listened to me two questions ago, you may know the answer. You may want to scroll back up. Was it Comprehend, TextTrack, Lex? Or a service we will never have spoken here, which I don't know. As I'm watching these answers come in and just thinking about this, Ben, I could totally see Ooh, how hooking up some of these services together with Kendra um, and searching all of the, you know, because of, with everything going on and the amount of research that's being done on COVID right now, it's just, it's enormous, right? I could see where this would be super helpful uh, for people trying to find scientific answers quickly. Yeah, it, it's it's really cool. Um, we've actually had uh, folks across, I think, over about ninety different countries use the service, and and uh, ninety a, countries. Yeah. So. Wow. Damn, that that is awesome. So, answer is Dextrack. Dextrack is the thing that can take dun, dun, dun. the pictures and then bring that into text, and that's how you integrate it into it. Okay. Last question. Let's see. Let's see what we have. <laughs> Standing. <laughs> Where where am I? Like anyone anyone knows? Sugar Shack, Sugar Shack down on there. <laughs> that that's actually in like right there, right? That that's an a big giant oven right there. Like it, it it's we call that, that the, so the, cool. the the uh, hell doors. That that's how I call <laughs> them because when you open that up, you don't you don't want to be in front of that. It's crazy. So. Is your maple syrup the best that there ever was? Well, obviously, like that should you be can't, a question. Like, come on, <laughs> like you can't ever ask that question. Like, come on. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, the answer is his maple syrup farm. There it is. So that that's exactly what it was. And we got a comment here about making them readable on the phone. We'll definitely work on that one. Um, yep. Beetle. So I I don't think I've ever tested that. So we will get that readable in the form. We'll yep. confirm. Awesome. Great question. Link to buy, John. Unfortunately, I don't sell it outside. I don't, I, I'm not part of the... Well, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. I'm like... <laughs> Stashing something here, so... <laughs> cool. Awesome. So, um, and, and that's just a wrap, guys. So, that, that was all the questions that I had uh, for all of you today. So, as usual, our moderators are going to be throwing a couple of tutorials into the chat. Um, you can set some hands-on experience with Kendra if you're interested. Um, make sure that you can take, that you will take some time between now and in the next week's episode to kind of go through a little bit of these things that are there. Um, and then if, in case you missed it, the moderators are going to also be posting a link to a page where you can see all of the homework and recordings of our previous episodes, if you're interested in that. Very cool. Um, and, and I do want to get to next week, but there's a question in here. I know we're past the time, but it's a great question. So Ben, I'm going to throw it at you anyways. Um, uh, Curious CK is asking, I see a limit of 500,000 documents per index. If I have more than that, is it another index? Can I search across multiple indexes? Pretty good question. Yeah, yeah I, um, I don't know if that is a hard limit or soft limit. Um, that's something we can follow up on. You can search across multiples, but really, ideally, we'd want that to be in one index, um, unless they're completely different domains of data. So if you have data that's like IT data and then healthcare data, that's logically makes sense to put in different indexes. But it's, if it's really all the same type of data, um, I'd love to kind of dive deeper on that use case <laughs> and uh, kind of see see how we could help there. So, okay. so the short answer is I'm not sure. We'd have to have to take a look at that. Awesome. Very cool. Thanks for letting me throw that last one in there. Um, but anyways, John mentioned next week. Um, so next week, we do have another great episode that's coming everyone's way. We're going to talk um, about Amazon Connect. And we're going to revisit Amazon Lex, kind of like Ben was saying. Um, which is that chatbot um, building custom chatbots. 
Um, and so we are really excited about, about that episode next week as well. Awesome. So Ben, thank you for stopping by and then uh, chat, you rule. So, and then uh, Kirsten, you're pretty cool too. So that, hey. that's good. <laughs> you know, so. we do what we can. Yeah, Ben, thank you so much. This was, this was awesome. This was just so cool. And thank you chat uh, for participating and just coming out and having a good time with us today. Awesome. Well, see y'all next week. <laughs> see you guys next week. Goodbye. Bye.